Well, with 2020 coming to a close and the age of grace as well coming to a close, I thought I'd just take a little, a few minutes here to look back on 2020 and talk about what I saw uh, in terms of the world and, and the prophetic and what, of course, we have to look forward to in 2021 and beyond. Now, of course, the, the year started uh, with an impeachment trial that uh, was going on. Uh, the impeachment trial, if you recall, the Democrats accused Donald Trump of having a bad phone call with, your, with the president of the Ukraine, and he, he was trying to dig up dirt on his uh, opponent, Joe Biden. Well, at that time, Joe Biden wasn't his opponent, but apparently the Democrats knew that he was going to be, so uh, that, that's kind of interesting right there. Uh, but there was no dirt really to dig up because the, uh, the dirt uh, was already uh, exposed by Biden himself, who had said that uh, he got the uh, prosecutor fired there in the Ukraine. Um, so anyway, the impeachment was kind of a dud. It was uh, really just uh, posturing by the Democrats. And of course, ultimately, uh, Trump was not found guilty and uh, the Senate uh, decided not to throw him out of office. So uh, at that point, of course, the coronavirus had already started in China and has already made its way over to the United States. Well, before even the year started, uh, many people got sick, at least in New York. Uh, and then, of course, afterwards, uh, there was uh, calls about uh, whether or not there was going to be a problem with the virus. and. Uh, Dr. Fauci and others said there was not going to be an issue with it, uh, that it was just a little bit worse than the flu, and that uh, you shouldn't have to even wear a mask, and uh, this thing is pretty much going to come here and go away, ultimately. And that's pretty much what, what Donald Trump said, President Trump said. So uh, that's that's kind of what, what, what happened. And then, of course, uh, what really resulted from that, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyway, um, at the beginning of the year, you have to remember that uh, the, President Trump was still working during the impeachment process and uh, ordered a hit on Soleimani over uh, in Iraq. And that's uh, was Soleimani was a guy who was uh, ahead of the um, Iran brigades and was, uh, you know, a pretty bad guy. I mean, let's be honest, he was fostering a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, activities over there. And he had a lot of mines that were um, put in and killed a lot of American troops. So uh, so that hit was done. And then in addition to that, uh, there was also a lot of climate change talk. Uh, if you recall, Greta Thunberg uh, went to uh, Davos and spoke uh, again about how the, the adults are killing the planet. And, um, of course, later in the year, she decided to go back to school and realize that all the adults were just using her. So <laughs> that didn't work out so well for her. But uh, at least she's back in school and is actually learning some things. Hopefully she's actually learning real science. Uh, so there was a bunch of climate change talk back then. But then, of course, the climate change talk kind of went away, at least uh, on the outside, except for, of course, the fires. There was a big wildfire in Australia, and then there was wildfires later on in the year in California, um, but the California ones were mainly due to mismanagement, forest mismanagement. They, they, I lived there. I used to live there for years, and they don't like to uh, to take care of their forest. They just like to let the forest go, and when it goes on fire, they wonder why it goes on fire. So, and then they blame, blame climate change on it. So. Uh, that, that didn't work out uh, so well for them because uh, pretty much President Trump and a lot of other uh, conser uh, conservatives, th they talked about it uh, and they said, no, you need to manage your forest. And they said it right in front of the governor's face. So that didn't work out so well for him. Now, I remember back then uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, you know, Britain was going through Brexit, which is interesting because right here now, Britain and the EU have come up with a deal uh, in order to finalize what Brexit is going to be. So uh, there was a lot of stuff that was going on in the beginning of the year that's actually gotten resolved somewhat th by the end of this year. Um, you know, the di Democratic primary was going on back then, and apparently they already knew that Joe Biden was going to be his opponent because that's what they had said in the impeachment trial. But that, that election was far from, uh, that primary was far from being decided. 
If you recall, in Iowa, there was a caucus, the very first vote of the primary, which was a disaster of an election. Uh, they didn't even know how to run it. They didn't run it well. They had machines that messed up. They had voting things that messed up. They didn't even know who the winner was, and they ultimately just said Buttigieg won. And so uh, that that election still is not resolved properly. So uh, and if you recall, uh Joe Biden didn't even come close to winning those primaries. He was out of it, basically, until guess what happened? Well, right before uh, Super Tuesday, Bernie Sanders was going was about ready to become the nominee. And guess what happened? Well, all the different competitors decided to drop out. Buttigieg, and of course, Kamala was out long ago because nobody wanted her. But uh, Buttigieg dropped out, and then Warren actually, uh, she, you know what she did? She stuck in so that Bernie, so that she would siphon off, siphon off some of the Bernie vote. And then Joe Biden took uh, Super Tuesday, basically, in many, many different states, and ultimately won the primary. So uh, there's some uh, stories about that. Uh, I'm not going to go into them here, but that's kind of what, what happened there. So... Uh, after that, basically, then we come to April, and we all know what happened in April. Well, that's when the election really started rolling because uh, they got um, they they got uh, some people to to do some things, and the next thing you know, there are protests in the street, and they're rioting, and they're burning and looting just like they do every election every election cycle. And so, of course, they're blaming the police. Now there were calls for defunding the police. There were there were rioting and looting called called peaceful protests or somewhat peaceful protests while the buildings were burning in the background. We all saw that. And of course, Black Lives Matter became uh, you know reared its head again after years of kind of dormancy but reared its head again. And uh, then this time, though, all the corporations and the sports teams latched on to it and said, yes, Black Lives Matter. And if you say anything else, you're a racist. And so that, that happened uh, pretty much toward the middle of the year. I think you all remember that. Uh, so there's a big police backlash, right? So then they started tearing down statues. And they started burning churches. And they started burning buildings. And they started burning up everything. And uh, that, that only lasted for a little bit because um, the president said, well, if you're going to tear down a statue, uh, you're going to have to serve 10 years in prison. And then uh, all the statues uh, stopped getting torn down. But, uh, but, the, but the corporations and the sports uh, teams uh, continued on with their, their Black Lives Matter uh, support and lost a lot of viewers and lost a lot of uh, customers as well. And so corporations started lining up against each other and taking sides. And then censorship really got rolling, right? So if you were going to speak out against some of these things, you were going to be censored and you were going to be trashed and you were going to be deplatformed. And so we all saw a whole bunch of people and a whole bunch of channels uh, actually kicked off uh, these different platforms. So by that time, we were well into the election season. But Joe Biden was nowhere to be found. The only thing that we had of him was some videos where he actually materialized out of nowhere and was pixelated and obviously was, was being, uh, you know, uh, filmed somewhere else and then transported into his basement, basically. So very interesting videos if you go back and take a look at those things. But Donald Trump was out there. He was doing rallies. He was getting the people all excited about it. Uh, while on the Biden side, they were doing nothing, and Biden was calling a lid every single day uh, by about 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning. So uh, that was the campaign. The campaign was Donald Trump out there with massive crowds of, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 people, and then Joe Biden alone uh, not working. It was very interesting. But then Trump got the coronavirus, if you recall. And everybody was like, whoa, what's going to happen with Trump? Is he going to die? Is he going to live? And within two or three days, he was out of the hospital and he had said he felt like a million bucks. He had taken a couple of drugs, experimental actually, and the next thing you know, this guy was back on the job. 
So that coronavirus didn't really slow him down. And the campaign uh, continued to roll on. And then right before the election, there was the Hunter Biden laptop. And the Hunter Biden laptop showed that Hunter Biden and his family paid Joe Biden uh, because of the favors due to his name. They give him a little, little vigorous, as they call it, about 10%, up to 50% of whatever they make. And yet, the mainstream media and all the newspapers and everything like that called it Russian disinformation, believe it or not. Oh, yes, former intelligence agency chiefs say this is Russian disinformation. Well, as we know now, it was not. And actually, we knew then it was not. But they decided to go for that uh, narrative. And uh, just like they had done pretty much the previous four years, called everything Russian disinformation and that uh, Donald Trump was a Russian agent, uh, which is an interesting segue into Eric Swalwell, who is <laughs> known to have actually been dating and or whatever with a Chinese nationalist who was a spy. So you've got the guy who's uh, saying that Trump is a Russian agent who's actually in bed with a Chinese agent. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. Then, of course, we had the election, and we are still figuring out who won that election. Now, of course, within the first hour after uh, the, the late night, uh, early morning vote dump came in from those battleground states, uh, you would have known that Joe Biden would have would, had won. Of course he'd won. And any kind of talk about Joe Biden not winning, well, that was censorship, and that was going to get you into deep trouble. So we're not going to talk about any of that here. We're just going to say we will see what happens in 2021 with that. Of course, after the election, now we have the vaccine that's out. And the vaccine, we've been told by doctors that even though you get the vaccine, doesn't mean that you should be able to go outside. So what is the vaccine for? No one's quite sure, except that it, apparently it makes really good photo opportunities for all these politicians to show that they're getting vaccinated. Or are they? Is there a cap on it? Was there nothing in the, the, uh, the vaccine syringe? Uh, was it just saline solution? Of course, no one knows. But the photo opportunity is there for them. It makes them look good. Then we have, of course, the stimulus. $2.3 trillion worth of bloat and pork, <laughs> just funding all kinds of different uh, initiatives all over the world that most of us have no idea what they are. And if we did, even some that we do know, and we do not agree with them. But our tax dollars, good at work. Are we going to give it to the American people? No, we'll give them $600 and then 2000 No, that's too much. That'll raise the deficit. But let's spend $2 trillion elsewhere. Yeah, that's our government for you. And that's where we are right now at the end of 2020. But 2021 is right around the corner. And many people are saying, well, it's going to be a better year. 2020 was the worst ever. It's only going to get better from here. Well, we as Christians know that that actually is not true. It is not going to get better from here. It is going to get worse. But while we're here, it's not going to get super worse. It's going to get really, really bad during the Daniel 70th week, which we're on the cusp of. And we are seeing right now the lineup for it. And I talked about the winds of war and Iran and what's going on right now. There are prophecies about to be fulfilled that have been about to be fulfilled. We've got Isaiah 17. We've got Jeremiah 49. We've got the prophecies of Elam. We've got the prophecies, of course, Damascus in those. We have the prophecies of uh, the cedars of Lebanon falling. We have the prophecies of uh, Ashkelon and Ashdod going down, the Gaza Strip going down. So we have those prophecies that are about to happen. And, of course, we have Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is the kicker which is where God shows himself that he is God and these are my people, Israel. And of course, at that point, if it's exactly at that time or just beforehand, the rapture is going to take place, which is our blessed hope. 
Of course, before that happens, we are here in order to spread the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. God himself died for our sins. God rose him from the dead because he was sinless. He had paid for all the sins of the world on the cross. And that he's coming back again. He is sinning into heaven. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. And he's at the door ready to come back to take his people. And, of course, after that happens, the worst time on earth will occur. No worse time before, no worse time after. That is going to separate anybody at that point who wants to come to Christ will we'll have to die for their faith. But we who are alive and remain beforehand will be caught up together with those who are dead in Christ, who are raised to be with the Lord forever. And that's what we have to look forward to, and that's our blessed hope, and that's what we are to comfort each other with those words. So 2021, here it comes. Everybody buckle up and keep watching, because the time is short in order to get with the Lord. But if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior and that he died for your sins, and through no works of your own, that it's a free gift from God, you are saved by grace through your faith. In Jesus' name, we'll see you in 2021.